afternoon and welcome to the fifth and final keynote of IFA 2022. My name is Annabel Mandeng and I am your MC here on stage. I hope that you've had a great second day. I hope that you saw lots of amazing innovation and maybe even had a chance to enjoy the fantastic weather. Now, for one time, I would like to invite to the stage again the Senior Vice President of IFA 2022. Please put your hands together. This is David Ruetz coming up on stage. <laughs> Hello, David. Hello. <laughs> good evening, Annabelle. Good evening, everyone. And good evening to the audience who is listening to our broadcast, Near or Far. Before we start, I'd, length, I'd like to thank you, oh. Annabelle, for being our MC these days and <laughs> for taking us through our program of keynotes. Amazing work. Thank you so much. It was great fun. Seriously, I had a lot of fun. And now, two days down, three more to go. So uh, what is your take of IFA so far? I think it's going really, really, really well. As you all know, this is the first real IFA in three years. And parts of the world are still in lockdown, unfortunately. Despite this, 80% of our halls are full and our visitor numbers are really strong. So both for the general public and especially for trade visitors. And as you said, it's three more days to go, but I think IFA is doing great. And you've said it several times, but I'm going to say it one more time. This year's biggest topic at IFA is definitely sustainability. Sustainability, absolutely. The more I get around and speak to people, the more I'm certain. Sustainability is at the heart of much of this year's innovation. And I hope that many of you had the opportunity to join us here on Friday afternoon and listen to Hakan Bulgurlu, the chief executive of Archelik. What a powerful speech. He started by outlining the tough reality of climate change, how it affects all of us, not in 2050, not in a few years, but today. And actually, for a moment, it was quite depressing. <laughs> but then Hakan also gave hope. He showed how humanity can come together and turn things around. Clean up its act, move beyond fossil fuels, and ensure that this is a world we can pass on to our children. Hakan said one thing that really stuck with me, the world's largest and cleanest energy source, he said, is already at our disposal. We simply have to use existing devices more efficiently. We have to save energy, for example, by switching off appliances and gadgets that we don't use, and by making sure we run them in a most efficient way. So it's simple, but may have a big impact. Yeah, it's like that's a case of many little savings add up to a lot. We can all do something, right? Exactly. <laughs> and there's a study by the United Nations. It says that homes account for around 20% of all CO2 emissions. If we make it easy for people to cut, in the, uh, cut out the waste and, and the idle running of appliances and other devices, then together every single one of us can make a huge difference. Actually, I was told just now that more than half of our consumers are really keen to reduce their own carbon footprint. I mean, that's based on a study from last year's commissioned by Schneider Electric, who are our next keynote speakers this afternoon. You know, most people have really good intentions, but for many, life gets in the way. That's why technology, especially smart home technologies, can be part of the solution and help us build a climate positive world. And that's exactly the topic of our final keynote, the smart home is the smart option for a sustainable future. It's our second hybrid presentation this year. Here with us is Bidisha Nagaraj, Vice President Global Marketing. And joining us online is Genael avis Uet, the Chief Strategy and Sustainability Officer with Schneider Electric. From me, goodbye to all of you. 
Thanks for having me. <laughs> Enjoy the keynote and have a great IFA. Bye. Bye. The world is full of people telling you who to believe they are. Well, we thought we'd tell you who we're not. Let's start here. We're not in shipping. We don't make lifts. Seriously, no lifts. We do this. We're good at this. And we make all of these. And even though you'll find us here and here, we don't make energy. We make you save it. And you'll be saving the environment too. Are we an internet company? Well, we connect and power just about everything around you. Helping machines talk to each other and to you. Making your world more personal. We're seeking out the big questions and answering them honestly. Like how can we make the most of our energy and resources? Or can we make access to energy and digital? Basic human rights. We're real people, employees, developers, partners, investors, and inventors, all passionate about doing what's right. We're open, humans of all sorts from all over, learning from each other and about each other. We're not here to save the world. It'll go on with or without us. We're here to be your digital partner for sustainability and efficiency, to ensure life is on everywhere, for everyone at every moment. session in IFA Berlin. As you've seen, uh, no, we don't make lifts, as you've seen in the cliff. Uh, we are Schneider Electric. We are a global leader in industrial automation and energy management using digital technologies, including the residential sector. We are proud to be present in over 100 countries around the world, and we have about 160,000 employees united by a single purpose, and that is bridging progress and sustainability for all. How do we do it? By empowering everyone to make the most of their energy and resources, and we call this Life is On. Welcome again, my name is Bidisha Nagraj. I'm the Vice President Marketing for our Home and Distribution Division at Schneider Electric and delighted to be your host for this session today. I will be joined virtually by Schneider Electric's Chief Strategy and Sustainability Officer, Gwenella Vich Hugh, who unfortunately could not be here in person, but she will be sharing some key insights on the current sustainability landscape, a few challenges, of course, but the huge opportunities ahead. But before we go any further, I'm extremely happy to see your participation. You know why? Because I think by participating here today, we are already committing to a net zero future, as well as committing to handing over a great future for the next generation. So let me start by setting the context. As you know today, uh, energy is a huge lever in our fight against climate change. So let me share with you a few startling figures. Energy-related greenhouse gas represents over 70% of all emissions, including the CO2 emissions we all generate. In 2021, these emissions were still on the rise by 6% to reach 26.3 billion tons of emission, their highest level ever. If you look at the residential market, my God, it's on the tipping point today. Today, homes are responsible for roughly 20% of all CO2 emissions. And by 2050, households are expected to be the single largest consumer of electricity and the biggest contributor of the CO2 emissions. The current energy crisis is indeed put, put, putting a lot of pressure on our people's lives and our wallets. Not to mention, you know, the pressure that it puts for all those countries and nations who do not get clean energy. I come from India, and a large population base is below the grid today. So the big questions now are, 
twofold. Do we know enough about the impact of carbon emission and the energy crisis? And the second one is, what can we do about it? In particular, of homeowners, developers, tenants, and simple consumers like you and me. In relation to this context, I would like to pose three questions to Gwenelle, our Chief Sustainability Officer, for her insights and thoughts. So my first question to Gwenelle is, in this context of an ongoing energy crisis right now, what does that mean for sustainability and for us? Well, thank you, Bidisha, for hosting this session uh, on sustainability and smart homes, and hello, everybody. You know, I'm really pleased to be able to talk to you today, even if it's virtually, because these topics are core, because these topics are so important today, and also because we will talk about what to do about it. So just maybe allow me first to introduce myself and tell you a little bit more about who we are at Schneider Electric. So I'm Gwenelle, everybody calls me Gwen. I am an engineer and a physicist, and I've always been passionate about systemic topics and more importantly, being part of the solution, which is why I made a career out of it, which led me to have a strategy and sustainability agenda of China Electric. Our company, you know, is a global company. It's also very local, which makes us very unique. We are able to innovate and to serve customers all over the world to have that accelerate their decarbonization journey. How to do that? We have integrated software, hardware solutions, and services embedded all together. So not only are we a solution provider among sustainability, we are also a respected practitioner, consistently ranked at the top of external ratings for environmental, social, and governance efforts, and our impacts on that. So last year, for example, we were even recognized as the world most sustainable corporation by corporate nights, worldwide. So more than that, we are also an impact company impact company because we believe that you need to do well to do good and vice versa. And it means that we constantly align our performance, business and environmental, social and governance agenda so they complement each other. And as an impact company, we are also committed to embark all our employees, all our suppliers, our customers, our consumers in an accelerated journey to a net zero future and a more inclusive future. That's why we took concrete and measurable commitments, especially for 2025, which is tomorrow. And by the time, not only we will have safe and avoided emissions for our customers around 800 million tons, but we will have also helped our suppliers to have their own carbon emissions. So working with customers, working with suppliers. But this is not only that. As of today, two billion people do not have access to clean and to reliable electricity, which means that they simply do not have access to equal opportunities in terms of social life, in terms of study and work. And at Schneider Electric, we are also a provider, a solution provider for these communities. And therefore, we are also working very hard to extend access to energy, access to education to millions of people. So just in other words, what we see as a mission for us, it's also to solve the energy paradox. What's that? On the one hand, energy is responsible for more than 70% of greenhouse gas emissions worldwide. And in fact, each of us, you, me, we consume about six liters of oil per day, counting of all energies we need to work, to live, to eat, to heat yourself and refresh and travel today. So yes, we're consuming a lot of fossil fuel. Now, considering that nearly 2 billion people still have no access to energy 
and come across limitations in terms of basic human rights to health, to safety, and to education. This is where lies the energy paradox. How can we serve more people with energy to thrive? All the while reducing energy-related carbon emissions, and we have to do that. How can we do so with clean yet affordable energy? This is the paradox that we want to solve. And needless to say that time is very challenging. Dependency on fossil fuel is strangling the social and economic welfare and development across countries and continents. No one can ignore that the energy crisis is impacting lives in a very real way for many around the world. Just examples like the price of food, the price of travel, the price of mortgages, rent, everything is increasing. And we are even experiencing energy rationing in Europe for the first time ever in many decades. And at the same time, the world continues to get hotter as we have seen another year of record breaking temperatures, homes and livelihoods ravaged by wildfires and ecological devastation. And you know, I'm living in the United States and that's what we experience. In the United States, in parts of Asia where we are in the midst of the hurricane season and where the strengths of the storms are increasingly putting the resiliency of homes, of our neighborhoods, of our towns, of our cities to the test. In many places, we are hoping to avoid a harsh winter. Yes, but here's the thing. There are solutions, simple ones that effectively contribute to solving this dilemma, solutions that are more sustainable and more human, including solutions that can be part of your life and everyday life. That was uh, fantastic, and thank you, Gwenel. Uh, and I love the optimism, uh, but my, I have a second question for her, which is, if solutions already exist, as she emphasized, then Gwen, do you believe we are on the right track towards net zero? Well, let me take a step back. For me, net zero is not a matter of destination, it's a journey to combat global warming and prepare the future of next generation. We all need to do more, which is why committing and setting science-based targets is absolutely critical. But we also know that we need to do so much faster. The next 10 years are the crucial ones, much more than the targeted year of 2050. This is because all the homes, all the buildings, all the factories, that we will tomorrow. They will have impact for the dozens of years to come. So how do we go about it? First, we need to decarbonize energy supply. We need to accelerate the transition to renewable energies in the power generation mix, all the while adapting and expanding grid capabilities and infrastructure. Why we should keep progressing here? It will take time but we just don't have the luxury to wait, so we have to act now. And this is also why we have to put even more effort in accelerating the electrification and the digitalization of transport industries at large and buildings, focusing on new buildings, but also not forgetting retrofit and renovation. And last but not least, we have to boost the deployment of solutions that empower people to adopt more energy efficient behavior. Energy related CO2 emissions grew to 36 gigaton in 2021, a record high and a trend that keeps increasing year on year. This is not inevitable and there are solutions. This is the key message. Our solution research teams estimate that why the right of amount of effort and speed across these three pathways, electrification, digitization, and efficiency to accelerate sustainability, we can save 10 gigaton of CO2 emissions a year. And this does not require for us to wait for the full transition to renewable energy supply to happen. No, we should not wait. Now, here's the great thing. These same actions 
will result in addressing energy insecurity and resiliency issues that we are all talking about. So what has this got to do with homes? Well, the answer is actually quite simple. Out of all building segments, the residential sector shows great potential in terms of CO2 emissions for new built at around 80% today and strong payback for retrofit buildings if, and I say if, we deploy smart solutions as well as on-site solar system and electrical heat pump at scale. And the good news is these solutions exist to use energy more efficiently, giving consumers more control and choice on how they want to manage and create their own home experience and lifestyle, a smarter and a more sustainable one. That's absolutely right, uh, smart and sustainable. Uh, let me go a little deep here. Today, our homes are already responsible for generating more carbon emissions than, guess what, transportations. Moving forward, more and more cars will become electric, and as we start to fuel our cars at home, energy use is only going to increase much more. If you're worried about your energy bill now, What's it going to look like when your energy consumption is even higher? Can I take a quick show of hands here? Do you think energy bills are going to go up by 20%? Anybody? Okay. How about 30%? Who believes it's going to go up by 30%? And what about 40%? Guess what? I have to share the bad news. Our energy bills perhaps are going to go up by 40%. Our research shows that 50% of our consumers that we spoke to want to reduce their carbon footprint and want to live in a net zero home. But you know what? The cost of energy and the cost of energy bills is more an immediate worry today. But like Gwen said, the good news is that there is a silver lining. And that silver lining is smart technology. With the help of the home energy management system, driven by artificial intelligence, we can use energy much more wisely today. I mean, if we combine the power of digitization and energy, we can put the power back in our own hands, making our homes more efficient and sustainable, as well as connected and personal. Not only will that save us money, it will also reduce the emissions to tackle the climate change that we're talking about. Isn't it incredible that we can have so much impact as individuals on the planet? I don't know about you, I sincerely believe that the challenge is not technology, because there are technologies available today. The biggest barrier really is the mindset. So now let's talk about how do we become producers of energy. We are consumers, but how do we become producers of clean energy? I'd like to share with you an amazing insight. The Schneider Sustainability Research Institute recently calculated that 20% of all of Europe's energy needs could be powered by solar housed on existing rooftops. That means a fifth of our energy could be just produced at home by people like you and me. If you live in the United States, the majority of your country's energy needs could be delivered this way, by the way. On the other side of the world, in Australia, they are a great example of a country with a high dependency on fossil fuel. But they're moving towards solar energy and decarbonized energy. In fact, 30% of homes are equipped with solar panels with an estimated return on investment of three to five years. So therefore, instead of just being only consumers of energy, we have the potential of becoming clean energy producers. Think about another scenario in addition to saving money on our energy bills by reducing waste. We can start earning money by selling the excess energy back to the grid. But it's you know, not just the installation of solar generation or microgrids in our homes that offer the opportunity to reduce our bills and our carbon footprint. 
as our transportation becomes more electric, guess what? Our cars are going to become more multifunctional. What does that mean? Well, in addition to taking you from point A to point B, our electric car batteries will become a means of storing and releasing electricity to power our homes when we need the energy. Taking energy from the grid when it's the cheapest, or storing excess solar power from our rooftops, or even being paid by energy companies to store excess energy. And deploying that energy when we need to heat or cool our homes or when we have surges in our own demand. But before, you know, all this can happen, our homes need to become smart. And I have to say, uh, I, don't, I really don't like this figure, but today only 12% of our homes globally are smart. You know, we need to move to a, a space where our audio speakers play on voice commands, lighting and heating we can control via an app, and switches and sockets that help us potentially save energy. Most of which, by the way, up until now, didn't talk to each other. But the great news is that today it can. The single unified connectivity standard matter will catapult smart home technology from an emerging technology to a mass household adoption. It will enable products to connect and work with each other even when they are from other manufacturers. It's brand agnostic. And we expect to bring, Schneider Electric expects to bring the first matter-compliant products later this year. Another example is, why does it matter if my EV charger can talk to my oven? You may well ask, where's the connection and why is there a connection? Well, as I've already mentioned, electric vehicles place a very heavy load on home energy system. A load most homes weren't built to support, honestly. So you need intelligent energy management systems in place to balance your home energy demand to avoid overlaid, overloading your systems. For instance, if you start cooking, the smart system will automatically slow down charging of your EV. And once you finish preparing your meal, the charge of the EV will return to full speed. Again, very proud to say, Schneider Electric's uh, super-fast EV charger is the first on the market to empower users to monitor EV power consumption in real time, predicting spending, setting budgets with four different modes, charge now, green charging, cost-effective, and customized scheduling. That was a lot of information, I agree. But I just wanted to give you the big picture of what's going on. But as we process this, isn't it fascinating to see the power we individuals have to make an impact to save the planet, and especially in today's situation, to save our wallets? Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the home of the future. This is indeed the home of the future we are innovating for with smart home energy management at the heart of it, which we call WISER in Schneider to make sustainability more accessible for all, like Gwen said, and help decarbonize our planet. So to wrap things up, I have my last question to Gwen, which is, what, Gwen, what does home mean to you? Well, home for me is where my family lives, where your family lives. You know, it should be a place where we can feel safe, and comfortable in, and that includes the energy part too. Well, we say at Schneider Electric that sustainability is for all. And to me, it's clear that we should all have access to a sustainable home. And that home is smart, or energy smart, if you want to be precise. Well, smart homes will allow people like you, like me, to take back control and have more visibility into how we are using energy making it easy to identify where energy is wasted and savings can be made without having to compromise nor on comfort, nor on convenience. You know, a smart home should be basically doing the hard work 
a smart home should help you to pay the latest, the lowest possible price for energy and actually save you money or even earn money from energy if you choose to produce your own. Well, I can't say it enough. The technology already exists to make homes more energy efficient, to give us the data to manage energy use more effectively and power our lives with renewables. It's just a matter of deploying it faster and at scale, but it's there. And this technology can help us to be 10 times more energy efficient. Well, if you're listening to this, thinking that's okay, if you're a homeowner, but my landlord is never going to invest in these solutions because they are a costly, complicated system to install. Well, I'm going to say the landlord is wrong. These solutions, they are all available also for you, for everybody. You know, sustainability, again, it's for everybody. It's for all. So just let me explain. Basic smart solutions can provide an immediate element of control smart radiator valves and thermistors and smart rockets and switches and their associated apps can easily be purchased and installed without the need for complex and tedious changes of the boiler or the fuel balls or the installation of solar panels on the roof. So smart thermostats, they can also connect to an existing smart meter, providing you with not just climate control information, but actually letting you know how much energy you're using and the cost on a room-by-room -room basis. And cherry on the cake, once you purchase, these devices are yours. So you can take them when you move. So no surprise that our recent global consumer research found that smart thermostat and smart lightning are in the top three of smart devices purchased. And all these smart solutions, they can just easily be installed in apartments or social housing to help provide residents with greater understanding of how, when, and on what their energy is being used. And again, the technology that we are talking about can provide smarter and more sustainable homes for homes, for all, no matter what type of buildings. And the principles are always the same monitor energy use, performance in waste of buildings, identify ways to reduce waste and energy costs, and at the same time, improve their maintenance and lifespan. And well, it's also possible to install microgrid with solar or wind. Well, it will generate energy locally, that is on site of your building, your home, or your residential district. And there are innovative projects testing the capabilities of thermal batteries, water, or even sand, to capture renewable energy, to store it and release it in the form of district heating, which can be an excellent solution for social housing. Well, I suppose that the point I'm trying to make is that there is no one-size-fits-all. You know, it's a talented solution. There is a world of huge opportunities, huge possibilities when it comes to smarter and more sustainable homes. And Schneider, we believe that sustainability must be for all, not just those who can afford it, for all. There are all sorts of smart devices, smart technologies, but the best one is the smart that works for you. So count on us to keep innovating for you and for homes of the future and to keep delivering solutions that fit for your needs at your doorstep. Well, for now, I want to thank you for listening to me and I would like to say goodbye to all of you. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you, thank you, Gwenel, and thank you everybody for giving us a patient hearing and uh, being here today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the future truly is in our hands, as we have heard and seen. We have greater controls over how energy is going to be produced, stored, and distributed in the homes. The time is really now to act 
and convert this knowledge into action. Thank you again for being with us today. We invite you to our booth, which is at 5.2, uh, and, and you, know, you can see and witness the smart and sustainable homes of the future, what we discussed today. But thank you again. Your participation means a lot to us, and it really means that you are going to take an action towards a smarter and a more net zero future. Thank you again very much for being here today. Thank you. Thank you.